several, several people, people here with us. Some people we don't know even, brand new people. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Hi, everybody. So if you want to, we will certainly, this is, um, you are welcome to ask questions in the middle of this. And um, so, and I might ask you questions because I do like to interact as much as possible. So um, uh, if you are near your mute button so that you can unmute um, as we talk and ask questions and things like that. Um, but uh, we got several people. Oh, here we got more people. Here we go. Okay. All right, good. So can I, uh, hi, <laughs> can I get, um, uh, can everybody just tell me um, who they are and what their puppy's name is, just so I have an idea of who's here. Um, so Scott? Yeah, this hi. is Woody. This is Woody, okay, good. I haven't seen Woody since day school, but I know he's been taking some other classes. Ooh, he's looking handsome. <laughs> he's a good uh, boy. <laughs> he loved his first class and then it got all canceled. Oh my God, it's breaking my heart. We gotta figure out what we can do about that. Us too. Uh, and then Mary Pat, you guys are here with Millie. Yep, we got Millie. Millie and um, uh, this guy need to meet. I think they're gonna be fast friends. See that? <laughs> See that one, Scott? That's who that needs, that's who Woody needs to meet right there. What's his name? That's Millie. Oh, hey. Woody and Millie to the two labs. Okay, and then uh, Brianna, what's your oh, puppy's hi. name? So this is um, Stephen and Brianna, and we have Lucy. Oh my God, who's that? Uh, Lucy. Uh, Lucy. Oh, okay, Lucy. sorry, Lucy. I got it. <laughs> okay, Lucy, and then uh, is uh, Grace is here? Yeah, we're here. Here's Kip. Okay, Kip. Yay, Kip's here. <laughs> there he is, the one and only. All right. And then, uh, here he is. Now he's gnawing on you, just as you know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Joy is joining us again today. Joy, are you here with us today again? I'm here, and this is Matcha. There's Matcha. There she is. Good. Did you get all the information you needed today? Yes, I did. So much. Yes. Okay, very good. All right, everybody. So let's talk a little bit about what we are going to do um, about this uh, nipping and biting. And so you know, right, that um, puppies, <laughs> when they are born, um, you understand that they are born and when they um, are with their litter mates, the only thing that they ever, ever do is wake up eat, pee, poop, and go find another puppy and bite it. That's all they do. They <laughs> go back and eat, pee, poop, and then go find another puppy and bite it. So it's obviously very natural puppy behavior. It's a puppy hobby. Now, the good news is, is I mean, this is everybody, um, this is, thinks that this, theirs is the worst that it's ever been. Um, and it is all bad because we know that they have super duper needle teeth. Uh, and it hurts really bad, uh, and then it scratches, and, and people are constantly showing me their, their arms and their legs and stuff like that. Um, and we know, believe us, we know. So I believe, and if you've been to any of our puppy classes or any of the stuff, you know that we work on, we really, really work on what's called bite ambition, meaning that we're trying to teach them to have a soft mouth. Now, one of the best teachers, obviously, this is why it's so sad that we don't have um, other puppies ready because or that they can't play together because they are the best teachers of bite inhibition, meaning to have soft mouth with each other because they start to learn that if I want to play with this one, I have to be softer with my mouth. It's as if mother nature gave them needle teeth on purpose so that they could teach each other how to have bite inhibition. You know what I mean? Because if they bite another puppy too hard, the other puppy says, ouch, I don't want to play with you. And then that one says, oh, I got to be softer with my mouth in order to play with that one. So they start to have a soft mouth. And this is kind of one of the things that I want you guys to remember. The older they get, uh, you know, when we're getting close to the five and a half and six month mark, we are going to start teaching them that I don't want teeth on people ever. But if they are younger than that, then I do want you at some points to let them put their mouth softly on you. Because if we don't let them put their mouth softly on us and then we reward them or give them feedback that soft is good, then they'll never know that soft is good. 
So, and then of course, we're gonna give them feedback just like another puppy would give them feedback, but that hurts me when you do that. So, however that may be, and I will talk about because every single dog is different and their personalities are different. Um, so we know that if you were to say, ow, like a puppy, um, when your puppy is biting you, we know that the more sensitive your puppy is, the better that works. So if you say, oh, I mean, very dramatic. I'm not kidding. I mean, super dramatic. Uh, it cannot be like, oh, it has to be very, very dramatic. And if you say that and your puppy goes, oh, oh God, sorry. Oh God, you're so sensitive. I got to be careful. Then yay, you are lucky. And when they do that, you're going to go, good dog, good dog, the second they stop. Okay, now we other on the other hand have some very independent and uh, puppies uh, and they are not shy at all. And then the second we say, ow, they're like, let's party some more. That means let's party more. So if you have one of those puppies, of course, our whole philosophy is, philosophy is about redirection. But to get back to if they develop a soft mouth, meaning that's why I want you to let them put their mouth softly on you in the beginning, because if they have a soft mouth, this is bite inhibition. It's really the most important thing because the biggest reason that dogs get put to sleep is because they bite someone and hurt someone. So if they learn to have a soft mouth, heaven forbid anything were to ever happen, they were to have a dog fight or they were to bite a person, heaven forbid, they are a lot less likely to do any damage because they have learned bite inhibition as a puppy, learning that soft mouth is okay. Right. So it's very interesting. It's a, an amazing thing to watch because um, I used to own a daycare and you could see two dogs, you know, the daycare floor is like a playground and two puppies get or two dogs get in a big fight and it looks and sounds really ugly and scary and horrible. And then you pull them apart and nobody has anything on them at all. And that's because they have bite inhibition. Um, so that means just like you and I, we can have a big, bad argument and we can yell at each other, we can hit each other, we can do all of these things, but a lot of the times, most of the time, we don't actually hurt each other. So this is one of the reasons that this bite inhibition stuff is so, so important. So I don't want you to be going, no bite, don't grab hold of their muzzle, saying no bite, all this stuff. First of all, they're English uh, ESL students, they don't understand what no bite means. Um, and second of all, grabbing their muzzle like that is probably just going to make them want to play some more. Now, when I say to you that all they do to each other, if you ever watch a puppy one class or you come to puppy day school and it's group play, all they do is wrestle and bite and wrestle and bite and wrestle and bite. That's it. That's their most, 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 most favorite game in the whole wide world. So if they are coming to you and nipping, nipping, nipping about that stuff, that means that they are wanting human interaction with you. They want to interact with you. So that being said, if you give them any interaction whatsoever, you are reinforcing it. See what I mean? So even if you go, Whoa, oh God, stop, no matter how ugly your face gets or your ugly your voice gets, it's still human interaction. And that's what they want more than anything in the world. That's what makes this difficult is because it's the exact same thing as jumping up. If I give you any human interaction whatsoever, forget it, I'm still rewarding you. Because to a puppy, especially some of these puppies, the more um, independent and confident they are, to a puppy, any attention is good attention. I don't care if it's what you think to be negative attention, any attention is good attention. And so this is something we have to be very careful about that you are not accidentally reinforcing and rewarding their biting on you, okay? So we have agreed that we're going to let them and give them feedback with soft mouth. Now, are there any of you who, if you say, ow, that your puppy will stop? Like, oh God, sorry, I didn't mean it. They're sensitive enough to do that? Everybody says no. <laughs> that's funny. Nobody has that puppy. Uh, that's so funny. Okay. Oh, now I'm seeing everybody. Okay. All right. So this is one of the things that my mentor and I have a healthy disagreement on because this is the only thing he writes. If you've read the book after you get through your puppy, this is the only solution he gives. Um, and it just doesn't work for some of these confident puppies. And that's the, that's the truth. So here's what we're doing. Again, if our whole philosophy is, if you are doing something I don't want you to do, I must tell you what it is I do want you to do. Now you are a puppy, let's not forget how these are young dogs. If they are four and a half months or older, not only do you have a young dog, you have a teenager. So that's a whole different thing. At four and a half months, they're starting to lose their teeth. And when you have an adolescent, that's a whole different stage of development, which makes it even, you know, 
look, adolescence is not fun for any species, okay? So it's the same exact kind of a thing. So um, if you have a puppy that's doing that, anything your puppy is doing that you don't want them to do, what you are supposed to be doing is thinking about what is it that I do want you to do? How can I redirect you? So as they get older, as they start to lose their teeth, yay, they do lose those needles, and then regular adult teeth grow in, and they're not as uh, near as needle sharp as that. They will start to lose this desire to chomp and chew on everything. It doesn't mean they're not gonna still like to chew, like you give them a bone or a Kong or whatever, they're still gonna like to chew, but it won't be this constant desire to have something in my mouth. Now let's also remember that this is a natural doggy hobby, so this is not something that you should be punishing. Right? You're not going to be punishing them for chewing because it's a natural doggy hobby. Um, it doesn't make any sense to punish them for doing something that is very natural. I said this the other day that I do, it feels like it's a very dirty trick for us to take a dog into our home and all these natural doggy hobbies that they do, like nipping and digging and doing all this stuff, and then we just decide, hey, you know what? I think they're all behavioral problems. I want you to stop all your natural doggy hobbies. That's a pretty dirty trick that we play on them. So I don't want to fight their nature, I want to try to redirect it and give them opportunities to use their nature in a different way. So that being said, um, if you give your puppy feedback and they say that means let's party some more, um, then what we're gonna try to do is redirect. Now the first thing that I like to try to redirect with, of course if you're busy, you're gonna have choices. You're gonna have different kinds of chew toys and we're gonna talk about the things that I like the most. Lots of times people go, oh, they have a whole basket of toys. No, that's not gonna work. A whole basket of toys is not what we need here, okay? So, um, but if you can, you guys have already started, sit down, maybe roll over, maybe spin, whatever it may be. Touch, touch is a big one. And we're gonna talk about touch because touch is a good one to help redirect the nipping especially. It's also very good to redirect the jumping up. So we're gonna look at that. Um, but I want you to try to redirect first with this basic obedience stuff because if they want attention I want to give you attention by doing and let's learn some things now If they are cuckoo cocoa puffs and they cannot be redirected then, uh, by that or you're too busy to do that for a moment Then you're gonna go to your supply of chew puzzle toys Now most of if you've seen the puppy if you've been in puppy class We've explained these to you if you've had a private lesson with me. I've shown a lot of these to you there There's a list on our website um, under the must read on the uh, behavior blueprints of the my trainer recommended products. I actually need to edit it. I want to add a few things. As most of you know, I buy everything and then I test it out. So here's the thing. All of these products I'm about to show you that are good to redirect your puppy from chewing on you. All of these things I'm about to show you should never, ever be out and available all the time. Okay, they should never, ever, ever be out and available all the time. They are up in a cabinet. They are not, oh, there's my basket of toys. You may have a basket of toys, but these are not the ones. If you have a basket of toys that's out all the time, those are not the toys that your puppy is gonna redirect to when they're in crazy biting mode. It will not happen. Oh, I got more people. Oh, sorry. They're, oh God, people are waiting for me. Okay, hi everybody. Sorry you were stuck in the waiting room. I didn't realize I had people waiting. Oh, so sorry. We're talking about products to redirect your puppy from uh, chewing on you um, and not fighting a puppy's natural nature of wanting to chew. So the, the toys that you have in their basket or any of those toys, those are toys that they're gonna play with all the time. But just like children, you understand that if it's out and available all the time, then who cares? I'm bored of that, I only like the new thing. So these have to be very, very special. The other reason of that is because if I'm crazy about something and I'm wanting to bite you and I'm, I'm out of my mind a little bit, if I redirect you, oh my God, that's something so super delicious and so special. I haven't seen it in three days. I'm going to love it. And it's going to help me redirect my brain. Now, dogs are crepuscular, which means that they're most active at dusk and dawn. Okay, so probably you've seen this kind of a thing. It's usually the dusk time that I hear the most about. Uh, and people call it, you know, we hear the witching hour, Sharknado time. It's like when fur and teeth are flying around your living room and nobody can get them to listen. Or that, that's, that's a crepuscular moment, okay? Now, the good news about that is because they are crepuscular, we can anticipate that. So you have an idea that you can anticipate when that is going to happen. So if I can anticipate when that's going to happen, I can have something ready to make to help with that, all right? So the first thing is, is has your dog, the first thing, question to ask yourself while you're all home right now, the first question to ask is, has my dog gotten enough mental stimulation today? 
Has there been enough mental stimulation and mental exercise? Because if they have not, and they're stir crazy in their brain because they haven't been asked to do anything or work their brain, just like you and I, if we sit on the couch all day like a slug and we don't use our brain, we start to become mushy. So that's the same thing. So they will, their crepuscular crazy time will be more crazy if they have not used their, their brain that day in any kind of brain exercises or puzzles. The other question is, have they gotten enough physical stimulation? Now, some of these puppies are old enough and they've had all their vaccinations and they are, they are taking walks. Yay, we're all walking our dogs now. I'm out walking, I'm like, oh my God, look at all the dogs walking. I'm like, where was everybody before? This is so crazy. Why, where is it? All the dogs are walking now. The dogs are so happy. So um, that of course is the way to get our um, physical exercise right now because you can go out into the world, obviously physical. Uh, as you would probably know, if you've taken any classes with us, we really like the walk to be about me and my dog. We actually want social distancing when we're walking. I want them to have social time, but the social time is never on the walk. So the social distancing on the walk is, pretty, is a pretty great thing for us right now because that helps you concentrate on your puppy only. Now, there are other ways for us to get physical stimulation. If I can anticipate this crepuscular time, I know it only doesn't only happen in crepuscular time, but if I can anticipate these things, there are certain things that I can help get their energy out the fastest. If you have a lab, of course, probably they are wanting to fetch, right, fetch. If you have any kind of a doodle, that's a poodle, and a poodle is a natural retriever. Okay, some of you have working dogs and they have very, very high drive so, drive, so giving them something to do. Now, all of you, if you do not know this toy, then you need to get very, very familiar with this toy. And this is called a flirt pole. And the reason this has been the most popular toy that I've had for the past 10 years is because, first of all, the dogs love it. They love it very, very much. And second of all, it wears them out the fastest. It wears them out so fast. So meaning, it's a wonderful thing to practice leave it, take it, and basic obedience with, but when you're about to have crepuscular time, or you are having crepuscular time, sharp NATO time, the witching hour, taking them out, if you do this for about six or seven minutes, your, your dog is gonna be laying on the ground with their tongue hanging out. That's what this does for you, and that's why it's the most popular toy. It's just like a giant cat toy. Now that being said, I want you guys to remember, if you're using the flirt pole, it has to be used on a, on a, a surface that has, that has traction, okay? It can't be on a slippery surface. It has to be on grass or carpet or something like that, um, not a slippery surface. Also, your dogs are not fully developed until they're a year old. So I don't want you having them jump too high, right? You're playing with it, but you're not, and letting them kind of jump a little bit, but not too high. However, when your dog is fully developed at a year old, you will see we have dogs that will jump six feet in the air for this thing. I'm not kidding. It's the funnest thing. It's a really, really fun toy. But it will wear them out now the fastest. And you will see. It also has a, has a squeaker in it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hello, puppies. So um, this is one of the things that, oh, I, I got Tex here with me for some demo. He's, he wants to look at it too. So um, this is uh, one of the things that is going to help you with the men, uh, physical stimulation, right? Whether you're, if you're not able to walk, you can at least do this. You can even do this sitting in your chair watching TV. I mean, you can literally do it that way and that helps get the uh, exercise out. Okay. So um, the other thing that I like to do as far as just um, a toy to try to redirect that gets them moving away like the flirt pole are our doggy bubbles, the peanut butter flavored doggy bubbles. These are really, really great because the dogs are like fascinated with the bubbles. And so if they're nipping on you and just can't pay, stop paying attention to you and you start blowing bubbles, just watch. I mean, they're just like, oh, I mean, it's like squirrel and they just refocus onto something else. And they just, and so they taste like peanut butter. They smell like peanut butter. They're delicious. And so they are so fun. So they're on the list too. They're incredible. They're doggy incredibles. So um, taste and smell like peanut butter. And it's a fun, fun game. They're very hard. You'll see they'll, they land, they'll land like land whole bubble on their face and things like that. So I'm not sure what's in them, but they're really hard. They're non-toxic and all of that. They also have peach flavor if anybody has any peanut allergies in the house. Okay, so those are my two favorites, redirect into a physical activity. Okay, now the most important toys that you want right now are the toys that are chew and puzzle. That means that they are made out of a material that is that they can chew, but they can also, it's also you stuff it in some kind of way that makes it into a puzzle. 
What you want to do at this moment is make your dog a chew toy holic that's what we want them to be, a chew toy holic so that they are so addicted to those chew toys. I much rather than want them to be addicted to the chew toys and not to your fingers and not to your arms. So um, you should know, if you don't know this already, um, uh, our big thing is also is ditch your bowl, throw your bowl away. Don't ever, ever feed your puppy out of a, of a regular bowl. Only puzzles, only puzzles, all kinds of different puzzles. This is gonna help you get that mental stimulation without even having to try very hard. Um, I have seen people always go, oh, until they're how, how old? And I say, forever. I have senior dogs and they've never eaten out of a bowl in their life. Um, it's all, they never stop being hunters and foragers. So basically this is their, you know, it's their reason for living, right? Hunting and foraging and all of that. I want every opportunity to be a learning opportunity. Don't waste a whole bowl of food on just giving them a free bowl of food that they might inhale in one minute anyway. Make them work for it. They love it. They love the puzzles, okay? But right now, the chew and puzzle. Now, of course, I'm hoping that all of you have a Kong um, and know what the Kong is. Now, here's what just the regular Kong looks like. If you go into our puppy day school refrigerator, John can attest to this, if you go in there, you will see it is chopped, stuffed full of all different frozen toys. Because when they are in puppy day school, they do not go into their crate or into their pen without something to chew and keep their mind occupied. They never ever do. I want them to do something all the time. Now the ones that I'm showing you as far as the chew puzzle, these are the ones that I feel comfortable with you leaving them in their crate or their pen with. You can leave them unsupervised with them. So a Kong, here is what a Kong looks like frozen. See that? Now there's many, many different Kong recipes. Don't buy anything that Kong sells to go with it. It's all junk. You don't need any of that stuff. You can use stuff that's just regular in your own cabinet. Um, there are frozen Kong recipes on our website also under the nutrition tab. This one today just has, it just has that much regular Cheerio, just regular old Cheerios in it, and then about that much peanut butter. And then it was stuck into the uh, freezer and then frozen. We use a lot of pumpkin, we use yogurt, we use cream cheese, we, you can use the regular kibble. Um, you can, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Now this one, as soon as they get through the peanut butter popsicle, then the Cheerios just kind of fall out because they're dry. But if you do a different, um, like if you were to do chicken and rice, the entire thing freezes and then it takes it a real long time for them to finish because the whole thing is frozen. And it's like ice because at four and a half months, they're teething and they need to chew on stuff just like a baby does. So this is a frozen calm. Now, something that's new on my list are these crazy looking water buffalo horns, but I love them. I'm, they're not on the list yet, I'm gonna add them. But because the, the dogs love them, I can't believe how much they love them. And they're very, very, I've not seen a dog be able to chip it or uh, do anything to it yet. The other thing that I love about them is that they are hollow. So not only that I love to chew on them, but I can stuff it. I can stuff it and then freeze it and then give it to them. And now they're chewing on all kinds of stuff. They're so crazy looking, it's really weird. But they really, they love them so much. They're like dinosaurs. Um, okay, um, and then the second most popular chew puzzle toy, um, this has been on the list for a long time too, this is called a knobbly nubbly. And so what you do here, this is nylabone material. The reason Nyla bones are not on my list is because I don't see, I, I need to get like an 80% approval rate from the dogs before I put it on my list. And it's not an 80% approval rate, it's more like 50-50. The other reason is, is that they usually will start to chip at it and they actually will digest the Nyla bone. And I really don't want them to do that. So this is made out of Nyla bone that they can chew it. And then you unscrew, it has these little treat rings here. So you unscrew, And then you put a treat ring here. This is a cardboard play one. And then you put this on, and then you put another treat ring here, and then you screw this back on. Now then, they have two things to chew on, right? And then you also have these things to stuff. Peanut butter, yogurt, pumpkin, whatever. And if I see your pumpkin all over this thing with the two treat rings, put it in the freezer, and then I give it to you to redirect your brain when you want to bite on me, watch it will work they will redirect right to this immediately they will love it again when it's done it goes away it is not in sight ever they're not to see it okay if they see it it won't be fun this is also brand new that i do feel comfortable in the crate or the pin with him this is called a chili penguin and i like him very much for 
the dogs that are teething especially. So this is, do you see how he lays flat like that on his back? He lays flat on his back. That means that you can just pour like broth in there. What we've been doing is diluting baby food and kind of putting it in there, but you can pour just broth in there and then you put him in the freezer, he lays on his back and then it's frozen, just like a toy for like a toddler. So if they're starting to teeth, you give them this and they're gonna chew on it and it's gonna feel very, very good for their teeth. We're redirecting into something fantastic, delicious, and also good for their teeth at the same time, okay? Now, those are the chew puzzles, my favorite chew puzzle. Now we then, we have only chew also. Bully sticks are my very, very favorite thing for dogs that are teething. If you do not know what a bully stick is, you need bully sticks in your life. Now, if they are just, these are just chew only, right? So these are not to be left unsupervised. So don't leave these in the crate or the pen with them because there's always a choking hazard. You never know. Um, so I don't leave them unsupervised. There's somewhat supervision all the time. But I will all often, I just sit here with the puppy and just let them sit in my lap and I just go, okay, just chew on this. We're just gonna sit here and you're just gonna chew on the bully stick because you're not gonna, instead of my finger, let's chew on the bully stick. They are very, very good. Again, they are not out and available all the time. Sometimes I go to people's homes and I'm saying, are you rotating? And they say, yes. And then I get there and there's like five bully sticks on the floor. That's not rotating. That means I've got five bully sticks and I don't care about bully sticks anymore. They are not out and available all the time. Um, the other thing that's now on my list that I like for chew only are the new no hides. So if you haven't seen these, these are called no hides. So we learned a long time ago that raw hides are not good. So, uh, cause there's a lot of chemical and all that. So of course then someone went and created something that looks and acts just like raw hide, but it's like rice flour and different stuff. And then it's covered in, this one is a salmon one. They also have chicken and peanut butter. So, but they act and look just like a raw hide. And so it will keep them busy for a while and it's easily digestible. That's why the bully sticks are good also because they are also easily digestible. So these things that I'm showing you right now are very good ways to redirect. Oh, the last thing I have is this. This is a licky mat. If you have, don't know what a licky mat is, they, they, this, they, have, this, they have a bowl version, they have a small version, this is the large version. So what you do with this is you take, because you can take anything. If your puppy happens to like bananas, if you don't know, let's try, let's figure it out. Maybe they do, if they like bananas, peanut butter, pumpkin, what, any kind of soft food, you smear it in there. Take a spatula and smear it in there. See all the little creases and all of that? And then you put it in the freezer and then give it to them and watch them just sit there and lick that thing over. I mean, that is, if the dogs that get like, we do this with like dogs or vaccinations. We can clip their nails. We can brush them off because they're in the bath because they love it so much. It really redirects their attention. So it helps you with a lot of stuff, but it's also, I mean, it's a fantastic redirect. This is also something that you freeze. Okay. Now, um, does anybody, first before I move on, uh, because that's not the only thing that we're going to do uh, to redirect, but before I move on, does anybody have any questions about any of those products or any of the stuff that we've talked about thus far? I have a question. Hi, Ruben. Hello. Yes, so you say that we shouldn't give them rawhide, but then I found uh, all the rings for the... Both for the shovel Novi, the that toy, <laughs> all of them have row are row height, at least the one that I found. The the no hides do? The rings. Yes. Oh the rings. Yes, 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 yes. You're right. He's talking about so, this. He's talking about the rings for this. Yes, you are right. So um, for me, I don't love these rings. You're right. I don't love the um, ingredients in these rings. Um, and I've actually gone back and forth with Pet Safe. They've changed the formula and then they went back to this formula. So there is a little bit of rawhide in these rings. These are so little though. And if you see when you chew, when they chew them, it's different than the rawhide that looks like this because they can actually tear them off in chunks. You know, I don't know what makes rawhide different, but they tear it off in chunks as opposed to just chewing a big piece that just gets soft and slimy then they swallow it. Do you know Ruben, you know the difference? Yes, yes. Yes, so, and I'm not purporting, you're right, there are right in here, rawhide in here, but everything in moderation. And you can actually absolutely use this without the rawhide rings. I think, okay. that's, a, I think that's a minced rawhide as opposed to like a flat where it can break off in, in, in uh, angular pieces. Mm. I mean, you're right, rawhide's not good. You know, what we're thinking about doing, what we're trying to do is creating things like, can you make a round you know, cucumber or a carrot or an apple? 
or something like that and use that instead of the rawhide ring, you can do that and then click. So there's all kinds of, you know, with any kind of food or vegetable like that that you can do, then you can also replace that rawhide. But yes, Ruben, thanks for pointing that out. In fact, that does have rawhide in it. Okay, great, thank you. Of course, Ruben. Anybody else have any questions or um, concerns about what we've talked about? I have a question. So, um, our puppy has more than just one hour of crazy time during the <laughs> um, yes. So if I'm constantly giving her these like treats to distract her, um, should I be decreasing her amount of food? I, I worry that she's gonna like completely overeat, especially now with, with us giving her a lot of treats for the potty training. <laughs> so. Right, right, right. And that's a very good question. It's always our concern, you bet. Uh, and um, so yes, you will be decreasing her food depending on how many treats you give her for training or all of that. And that's why we're also trying to do ones, you know, if you're still feeding her, I think we spoke about this yesterday, if you're still feeding her three meals, then let's take out the lunch. You know, let's take out the lunch time. And then and we're trying to still do everything in moderation. That's why, of course, you would never fill this whole thing up with peanut butter, right? That would, of course, give them a tummy ache. You never do that. So, um, and then trying to do everything in moderation, but you're right. And then, you know, can I do as much fruit and vegetables as I can? Of course, you know, the ones that are not okay. You can look at the list. There's a big list, grapes, raisins, onions, things like that. Um, but anything soft, any kind of vegetable, pumpkin is great, all of that so that we're not really filling them up with a lot of junk and things like that. Um, but yes, indeed, uh, if we are training a lot, we will just reduce that food. No problem. No problem. You, you take the lunch away. And we're going to get to, I understand that most of them have more than one hour of craziness. <laughs> For sure. Uh, okay, anybody else have some questions about those things? Okay, awesome. All right, now, um, if your puppy cannot be redirected because they are cuckoo puffs, now, uh, some of you have dogs that are even more cuckoo for cocoa puffs because they haven't been able to go outside yet, which is just a tremendous drag right now, which means that you are having to work twice as hard as everybody else to try to get them stimulated because they haven't been able to go outside yet because they've got all their vaccinations. So you have to work twice as hard with all these other things. Now you're constantly, the, the protocol is still always the same, is to try to redirect no matter what it is, trying to redirect and give them something else to chew on or redirect into let's do some basic obedience or whatever it may be. Now, that being said, if you try these things and your puppy is still out of their mind because we know what it looks like when they're out of their mind, meaning they are cannot be redirected and they're just jumping at you and biting your face and biting your hair and trying to all of that. If they're doing that, that means that they are overly stimulated or overly tired. That's what that means. And when they are overly stimulated and overly tired, don't even try anymore. If they have gotten into that crazy mode, just like a toddler, do not try to negotiate. Do not try to, because the thing is this, is that when we have a puppy and they get into this crazy mode, the last thing we want to do is, try, is put them in a timeout or put them up because we want to spend time with them. However, if they are in crazy cuckoo mode, they need to have a break. If you cannot redirect them, they need to have a break. So do not try, no bite, stop, ooh, ah, that again is human interaction. If you do any of that, you are giving them human interaction and you are reinforcing the behavior. If you cannot redirect it and they are out of their minds, overly stimulated or overly tired means you can give them what's called a positive timeout. So in other words, you're gonna put them in either their crate or their pen. So here is just, I mean, this is just a rudimentary example of a pen, right? We just used a, a regular um, X pen. Many people do all kinds of different things for X pens. But the reason I'm saying it's a positive timeout is because what you are not doing is grabbing them and going, you are coming up so many, you're not doing that, right? What you're doing is, puppy, I love you very much, but you're way out of your brain right now. I cannot calm you down. I love you. Here's a beautiful Kong I have ready for you. You're going into your beautiful, wonderful crate that I bought you or your pen that's very, very comfortable, and you're gonna have a nappy. Because if they are overly stimulated or over, they're overly tired like that, if you do that, they're gonna be asleep in two minutes, watch they're going to be asleep. Now, we had uh, Taco, who isn't here with us today, right? Taco's not here. So Taco is, um, is a puppy that we have uh, in day school and has been doing stuff with us, and he is doing that 
You know, if you say, ow, he's coming right back for more in a big way. Um, and even if they redirect, they'll start to redirect and then he'll come right back for more in a big way. The other thing that they're saying is that they will put him in the pen or the um, crate. And then, so what we're doing in the pen or the crate is we're watching for full on settle, right? Full on settle. They don't get to come out until they're full on settle. If they take a nappy, even better. But it's a full on settle. So what they're saying is that sometimes they'll, they'll get a full on settle and then take him out of the crate and then boom, he's right back again. And so I'm sorry to tell you what you do in that situation is you put them, I love you puppy, but clearly you haven't had enough yet, right? Too much, it's just too much. Because any kind of negotiating or going back and forth, anything like that, it's just the thing. There is a little bit of punishment involved when you put them in their crate or their pen and that punishment is being separated from you. That's punishment. However, I want them to understand that if they get cuckoo and they don't stop biting you, they will lose that privilege. The privilege of being with you and hanging out with you goes away. You don't even necessarily have to say anything. It's just about, it's cause and effect, right? As soon as I get crazy and start biting them, love you so much, in you go. And if I let you back out and you get crazy again, love you so much, in you go. Look, when you have a teenager, it does not surprise me. If you're getting into the four and a half to five month mark or even older, if you have that, it does not surprise me if I have to tell a teenager puppy to do the very same thing 25 times in a row. That's what it means. That's what you have to do 25 times in a row. It's very, very difficult to be as tenacious and patient as a teenager puppy because they got nothing but time. All they have is time, all the time in the whole wide world to do whatever they can do to get you to do what they want to do. So it is okay. I know it doesn't feel good and it's not fun to put them in the crate or the pen, but you must because you have to stay out of danger of accidentally reinforcing them for doing all of that. And until they get a little bit older and their jaw starts to soften a little bit and they lose these baby teeth and they're easier to redirect and all of that, we just have to have a cause and effect of you going cuckoo and not being able to stop biting me means you lose your privilege of hanging out with me. That's all. Um, you know, sometimes this is harder for people to do, but you know, because if all they want is your attention, sometimes we'll do this kind of thing where we go, okay, I mean, the only punishment we ever do is like army sergeant voice. So if I were to go, oh, you're bad. I like it. And then I walk into the bedroom and I slam the door behind me. If you see the puppy on the other side of that, it's, it's really hilarious because they're like, I mean, what, what just happened? You, who I want the most, just walked into the bedroom and slammed the door behind them, the exact opposite of what they wanted. That's the exact opposite. So you did wait three minutes. Again, now some people are like, look, I cannot, I cannot let my puppy at this point alone for three minutes. And I get it. If you can't leave him alone for three minutes, you can't leave him alone for three minutes. That's okay. But you understand what I'm saying. The point is, is that you leaving them alone and not giving your attention is what will work. Any attention is going to continue to make it happen because all they want is your attention. It is all natural. It will stop. I promise you, it will. But you've got to just keep working with these things. But the most important thing also is making sure that you give them the opportunity to chew. Give them the opportunity to chew and to do things and to use their brain and their body. If you do all those things, then it's going to get better quicker. Um, I'm so, it, it breaks my heart because what we all know, if you've come to day school at all, um, when you pick your puppy up from day school, suddenly that evening, the bite inhibition is, ah, oh, it's beautiful because they have spent their whole day biting and then I don't want to bite so much anymore. So, um, I don't know, you know, depending on if any of you have adult dogs or you have, um, dogs that you are, you know, feel comfortable with social distancing, you can be able to play with. Um, anything that you can do to help get your dog social with another dog in this kind of strange time, I would highly suggest it. Um, you know, if you've got friends, family, whatever, something, something to help them get social and practice the biting. Because if you see a puppy with an adult dog and they start to bite them and be obnoxious like that, it's a beautiful thing to watch the adult dog give them correction because they will. And when they do, you are going to tell your adult dog, good dog, thank you so much. Because even if it looks like bah, that is a good correction because adult dogs need to tell puppies, cool it, you're being obnoxious, just like an adult would do. 
So even if it looks scary to you, if you don't know any better, that is a very good correction. Of course, we don't want them to hurt, but oftentimes it's funny because the puppy gets so startled, and, oh, oh, and then, okay, okay, we got it. So, but it's very, very, very good for them to be around adult dogs that can give them corrections. We have a very hard time because we try to bring adult dogs in that have been through our program to help teach the puppies. But what we find is by the time they get to be adult, they don't want to be around the puppies. They're just like, no, thank you. They just literally, they run away from them. They do everything they can to not interact with them because they think they're so obnoxious, especially when they get to be teenagers. So um, anyway, but there's that. Now, I've just spewed a whole bunch of information to you, lots and lots of information. Let's talk a little bit. Let's have a little bit of some Q&A. Anybody got questions about what we've said? Um, I have a, another question, of course. Yes. <laughs> uh, aside from that, the, the uh, buffalo horn that you yeah. talked about, is that one that we can leave with them or no? Yes, the buffalo horn, I do think that I can leave with them because like I said, I have not seen um, any dog, even the big dogs. I've been having it in my private training room and I've been testing it out with even the big dogs. And I've not seen even one dog be able to make any kind of crack, dent, anything in it. Whatsoever. So this, they come in different sizes, obviously. This is a giant one and this is a medium one and they got small and all that too. But I have not see, been able, and we've been using them in day school also, and we've not seen anybody or any dog be able to do crack them, splinter them, anything like that. They're very, very oh, good. So um, if anybody does see that, please let me know. Uh, but I haven't seen <laughs> any dog be able to do that quite yet. Stephanie, when you're teaching them the uh, bite uh, to have the soft, yeah, bite inhibition to have the soft mouth, mm -hmm. if, they don't, if they don't react to when your, oh, no. no. right, yeah. right. So then, that's when you go for the alternative chewing device like the Kong or any kind of redirect. Yes. You mean so any if you kind say of redirect. how, what does Woody do? Um, he wants to play more. Okay. He thinks it means let's party. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> he thinks it means let's party. Okay, good. So yes, that's when you would just go, okay, let me try to redirect in any of the ways that we've just talked about. There's many, yeah. many ways. I mean, I see you playing fetch with him. I mean, that certainly is a good way for the labs to redirect almost all the time, right? We can redirect. But in, it's all about redirecting their brain to prevent them from practicing and getting reinforced because you are responding and giving them attention for doing all of that stuff. Um, but he's gonna, I mean, he's already learned. I mean, he's a little bit older. Who's that? That's not Woody, right? Yes, that's Woody. Oh, I'm sorry. He, that, he looked black for a second. He's brown. Yes, yes. He's big. He does oh look. my God. How old is he? <laughs> Four months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's handsome. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So that's when we try to redirect. And of course, if you can't be redirected, it's okay. They are, especially if they're starting teenagers. Teenagers' brains are not fully developed. Here's what I also think. What I see so much of the time is that people... You spend a lot of time training your puppy, you're doing a lot of stuff, you're working with your puppy, doing all of these things, and at three to four months, you're frustrated because they're not they haven't stopped biting you yet. Let's look at it in the grand scheme of things, because if you're even here with me today, that means you're doing some stuff. You're doing some stuff, which puts you way ahead of the game. Um, if you don't know, only 5% of dog trainers actually, even, uh, dog owners even seek out training at all. So that in itself makes, puts you in a small percentage. So um, if you are doing that, you are way ahead of the game. You are doing better than you think you are. Just because you are doing all of these things already means that you are way ahead of the game. So believe it or not, we often get calls from people that dogs are eight or nine months old or whatever, and they've not done anything at all. So don't try, don't expect too much too soon. Just like if you had a human baby and they had gut and they were, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't try to be hurrying them to hurry and teeth, right? Hurry up and lose all your teeth and grow your big teeth, hurry up. It's not, you wouldn't be doing that because you know it's a natural progression. So you are, it just because you're here trying to learn and trying to do all of that, you're ahead of the game, but do not expect them to stop being babies faster than they're stopped being babies because it's just not time yet. So just accept that you're in puppyhood and enjoy it and take the puppy biting as part of it because enjoy your puppy because it's not gonna last very long. Puppyhood does not last very long. Four and a half months is over. Uh, teenagers still will do some nipping and biting, but it starts to really, really um, 
uh, dis extinguish as they get older. So just enjoy the puppy and enjoy knowing that that is part of puppyhood, but it's not gonna last forever. And don't try to rush it and don't get frustrated. No frustration, no ugly face, ugly voice. You would not get mad at a child for a natural behavior. Do you know? You wouldn't. You wouldn't get mad at them for a natural behavior. There's a natural behavior, this is what dogs do. So we are trying to, um, we're trying to uh, honor their natural doggyism, their inherent doggyism. Let's honor their inherent doggyism and also try to teach them to live in our homes <laughs> without hurting us and tearing stuff up. That's what we're trying to do all at the same time. So don't try to hurry it, it's okay. You're doing great. Um, has anybody taught, a, anybody, any questions first? Nope, okay. Has anybody, um, uh, do we have uh, basic obedience? We've got some sits, downs, things like that? Okay, has anybody taught their dogs to hand target, to touch? Oh, so we have with Kip. And how's it going? Does that help him? Oh, he loves it. Yay! Yeah. And, and like, when he gets into cuckoo biting mode, will it help? Um, I don't know. We haven't tried that yet. Mostly we're in like panic on what do we do to have him not be <laughs> So we right. can try tonight. Right, but that is a very good one to redirect too. If they like that, that redirect. So I'm still using my hands and my fingers, but I'm asking you to touch as opposed to grab on and bite. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate with Tex, because Tex is here and he knows touch. But um, also, this is called a touch stick. This is one that we bought, but you can make any shape, I mean, you can make this so easy, uh, so easily with any kind of tools that you have. I've seen people just make it with a stick and a tennis ball, a mini tennis ball, whatever. You can do anything. So when we teach touch, what we are teaching is, touch your nose to my finger. Does Coco set no touch? I think that if your dog has spent, John, tell me if this is true or not. If your dog has spent more than two days at puppy day school, they probably know touch. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Is that safe to say? Yeah. yeah. Will you come? So maybe you don't know touch, but your dog does. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Touch. Oh, look at like what he's going to tell show us. Let's see. Touch. Yes. Oops. <laughs> Crumbs. Freebie. That was a freebie. Pretty. Sit. Good. Touch. Nice. Go. Good. Okay, now, what we're doing is we want to be able to, that's very good. So we're going to do just like he's doing, meaning on either side, touch on the right, touch on the left. Now, the one thing that you get to choose, you get to choose what hand signal you want to do to get them to touch. Now, I learned a lesson with Tex who is here with me today, and that is I taught him touch, and then I taught him shake, and then I taught him wave, and then we did down. And guess what? All of it looked exactly the same to him. So, mm -hmm. because he tries every single behavior when I give him this. So <laughs> I have changed my touch to be two fingers, like that. So I usually use just two fingers for touch, just because it looks a little bit different than uh, shake. And everybody almost always teaches their dog to shake. Um, what it looks a lot like is bang when we get into that, because we will teach them bang. That looks the same too. Um, but we're going to add that word. So touch. So everybody, um, so if you, this is another thing. So the touch with your hands, I want to be able to do right side, left side. I want to do low touch. I want to do high touch. High touch is how we teach a jump for joy. And then that helps us with the jumping up on me because I can teach you to jump over here. See what I mean? I can teach you to jump here instead of on me. That's a touch, a low touch on either side, a low touch all the way to the floor, a high touch here. All of those things make a difference. Again, another redirect for jumping up also. Here is a touch stick. That just makes it extend your fingers a little bit more. So I can get you to touch like this and then pull you out real far away from my fingers and my hands and trying to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying to do touch with her and she's like, no, I just want to bite you? Yes. yes. <laughs> she said, no, just, if you give me your fingers, I'm going to eat them. That's it. Okay. So uh, let me show you touch with, uh, with uh, um, Mr. Texman here. And um, I wanted to just demonstrate to you, if you have not taken any of our classes yet, 
you, um, what we are going to do here, what you need to know about the touch command or anything that we're doing, is that we mark the very moment the behavior happens. So if we're teaching touch, the behavior that we're going to mark is the second their nose touches your fingers. The very second. Feedback has to be immediate. If you are two seconds late, it does not work. All right, it has to be immediate. You're gonna learn too, it's gonna take you a minute. So you can mark it with the word yes, or you can also use a clicker. We can get into clicker stuff later. If any of you taken my tricks class, we will use a clicker for that. So um, a click means you owe me a piece of food or just the word yes. For instance, if you were teaching your dog to sit, which I would imagine most of you have, um, maybe not all of you, but if you were teaching your dog to sit and we did lure reward training, and I lured your head up, and then the minute your booty hit the floor, I'd say yes, and then I'd give you the treat. Because what sit means is four feet and booty on the floor. So I marked it yes the second your body got into that position, okay? Now, if your dog did, like we said, they are ESL students. If you have not been working on touch, so some of you, uh, the dogs have become fluent in the behavior. When they're getting fluent in the behavior, you start to add the word. If they are not fluent in the word touch, the English word touch, do not, please, please do not touch, 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 touch. It will not help them understand English any faster. It will not. So just say it once and we're gonna try to make your fingers interesting and that's how it's gonna make it uh, happen quicker. I see you, Texas. So I'm gonna show you with, a, um, with my hand, just the word yes, and then I'll also use the clicker. He's suspicious no of me. Come on, Ted. Work for us. Okay. I'm also. Okay. Then you can make it uh, at distance and it makes him come to me. Touch. Yes. Good boy. Touch. Yeah. Good boy. Yes, good boy. He's very tired and lazy right now. My God, he's so slow. Not anything like your puppies right now. Okay. Any? Can you uh, let me have questions about touch and what the purpose what is and what we're doing here and how to teach it? What is he bites instead of? Just nose touching. <laughs> so if you can, so one thing that you can do, so if you put your fingers out and they don't go for it, then what you're going to do is take it away and then represent and try to make it more interesting. Or you can even rub odor on your fingers. When I do it, if you come into, if any of you have been to a private lesson or we try and I do it the very first time, they do it the very first time because my fingers smell like liver and their natural instinct is to come in and smell my finger. That's what it is. That's why it works the very first time. Mm -hmm. So if though, Ruben, if you can try to start, um, when she comes in, trying to move your hand up, do you know what I mean? At the same time, so it's actually just getting her nose and then clicking or saying yes for just that. And if she is, if she is too into biting mode, then just wait and practice it in a time when she's more tired. Practice it okay. after she's gotten out a, bit, a lot of energy um, or she's had a lot of brain work or something like that and she's more tired. It, you know, it's gonna be a good redirect later, but probably the time to teach it is not when she's in cuckoo mode. Okay. You know, teach it to her, get her fluent in it when she's more calm and is ready to listen. But you know, a lot of times if you start bringing out the super high value treats, if you bring out liver or hot dog or chicken or whatever it is, then probably I'm more apt to want to start working. And you can redirect her first by can sit, because she knows stuff mm -hmm. now. So sit down, roll over, whatever it is that she does, and then touch, and then touch, throw it in like that. Okay. You know, so it doesn't always have to be the same thing. But I often like to try to, because a lot of times they will touch your here or touch there or even like this touch, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm trying to move my hand just so that they start to get the picture. It's just your nose to my fingers. That is what also rubbing odor does to it or being able to hold a little treat like that will also help them touch right there just to kind of get the feeling of this is what it is exactly I want you to do. Okay. okay.
Anybody else? I can actually attest to that for Coco as well, uh, that um, the, the focus comes a lot better after she's had time to run around and, and <laughs> get the yeah, 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 okay. absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and that's probably true for all of you. When, the, when after they've had some time to run around and get some energy out, if they are in cuckoo mode, it's probably not the time to teach touch. But once they get fluent in it, it will probably be a good way to be able to redirect. Um, so Kip is going to report back to us if that does in fact work. So Kip, you have just been practicing it just as a trick, but not necessarily as a um, uh, as a redirect during nipping. Okay. Is that right? Oh, I don't see that anymore. Okay. Okay, so questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Questions, concerns? So if we want to buy any more of the uh, uh, toys that are for the uh, feeding, yes. uh, uh, just call you guys? Yes, so I think that what Joanna is doing right now until we figure out what's going on, because uh, we are still doing um, private lessons because on the big daycare floor we can get way more than six feet away from each other, um, and that seems to be working okay. Um, and so she, I think what she's doing is coming in, what she's decided to do now this week is to come in from 12 to 2 every day, just to answer calls and to return emails and then uh, be able to help people with retail if they need to. But also, if you want to see any, if, if 12 to 2 does not work for you, and you say, uh, you know, I want you to meet me, because we're here a lot of the time, obviously I'm here right now, so um, if you just say, I would like to, you know, when are you going to be available in these times, we'll certainly meet you here, no problem, we can meet you. Of course, um, Amazon carries everything also, of course, and the list is on your uh, behavior blueprints. I do need to edit it a little bit, though. Some of these things that I showed you today are not going to be on the list. But is there any chance? Is there any chance you guys will allow dogs to gather together just to give them some exercise in the near future? I am really trying to figure out how um, I can do something like that. I'm, I'm just torn up about it um, because, um, you know, how would I make that work? And then, you know, obviously trying to, wanting to be part of the solution. Um, I do believe that we have a really great um, argument as to whether puppy training for these young puppies is a, an essential service. Um, and so, and our attorney has looked at it and thinks that they are, and then, but I've thought about what you're talking about too, is can I just have people, but then again, we don't want anybody to congregate. So would that mean that I have to have you drop your puppy off and let them play for an hour or something like that? Right. You know? Right. Uh, we do that, but then again, if mm -hmm. I, I think if I'm going to do that, then why don't I just do puppy day school, right? It's basically the same thing, mm -hmm. people's dropping them off. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and it's, it's a real hard decision to make mm -hmm. in this I think that if we do it legally, I just, of course, don't want to put anybody in jeopardy, nor do we want to be part, of the, you know, part yeah. of the problem or anything like that. Um, it's real scary that they say things aren't going to peak in Houston mm -hmm. until awesome. the second week of May or something. But we did, we have already established, as you, already, as you probably already know, a curbside drop off, no personal items, all this stuff. We established a very, very strict protocol to try to make sure that we're completely safe. So that is okay. really what I want to do. The other thing that I thought about doing is renting out the space to you guys, um, you know, for people who need to come and let their dogs run a little while, just renting the space out for, you know, 30 minutes at a time or something like that. So you have some open space. Um, but it's just a real hard decision um, to try to figure out, to try to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Because, I, you know, I mean, I've got a very, very conservative operations manager, and that is very good because I need a conservative operations manager um, to help bring me back down sometimes. So, because I'm ready to go. I would like to open Puppy Day School today. But, um, but again, I know that we need to be safe. So, it's a real hard thing to try to figure out at this point. Would you come if we did that? Uh, yeah, I think, I think if we knew it was safe and that there was going to be social distancing. I mean, but I, honestly, I, I don't think I'd want to come. Uh, I'd want to leave my dog. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is also the other thing that breaks my heart is that um, you that you're not in puppy class right now because that is the time that the, the key element when you are there, right? The puppy day school is very important and very beneficial, but what's even equally as important, if not more, is you taking the class so you are there, so you're learning also, and then you see right. the play at the same time. You see the play and you learn what's going on and all that. What's gonna right. have to happen for those of you who don't worry about aging out, um, for those of you, if you did sign up for puppy one class and then weren't able to put off in the middle or something like that, um, and your dog 
gets above the five month mark um, before we're able to start classes again. I'm gonna create a, I don't know what I'm gonna call the class yet, but I'm gonna create a class for those puppies because for puppies from you know somewhere between five and seven months old that missed out because we can't put them with the babies anymore, right? With the brand new babies. So I'm gonna have to create a middle class that's somewhere in between um, puppy one and puppy two to still help the people who were in puppy one already and then had to lose um, all that experience. So, you know, don't worry if you age out because we will create something so that you get that experience and get that benefit because it's priceless and, and we need it. We need it. Let me say before we wrap up, um, I'm saying this to every single class that I do. Everybody should really, really be aware of this. Some of you have heard me say it over and over and over again. There are three things that you must be doing while we're in this position. Um, again, the youngest puppies are going to be the hardest hit right now because we cannot I mean, if you look at all my stuff, all it says is go out and meet over 100 people before they're five months old. Well, you can't really do that right now, can you? And it's hard to get out into uh, new novel experiences and um, all of that to create socialization. So what you have to work twice as hard. So what I need you to do so, and the very, very important is like we've already talked about, create as much mental exercise as possible. Mental games and mental exercise. We're doing a lot of virtual classes on how to help you do that because it's essential right now. They need, they need it, they need it. These puppies, their brains are developing and they need as much as they possibly can get. So you must do that. The second thing that you must do every single day is leave your puppy alone. You must leave them alone. So there are two ways that you need to leave them alone. The first way is you need to leave them, put them in a crate while you are home. And the second way you need to leave them is put them in the crate or the pen and actually leave the house. So believe me, they know when you are still there. <laughs> so you actually have to leave the house. And it doesn't have to be for any big, long length of time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, go to the grocery store, go to the gas station, whatever it may be. But you must, they've got to learn to be alone. This is a very scary situation because all of the dogs, not only the puppies, all of the dogs are gonna have a very hard time when we go back to reality and we leave them because we've just been there with them the whole time. So you got it. you cannot stop doing that. You've got to, got to keep doing that. And the very last thing is, um, I don't think most of you are in my huggable puppy, but if you have taken the puppy one class, I mean, I can do it again, or you can read the paperwork, but creating huggable puppies, meaning is that the touching from head to toe, the handling and gentling. So we actually um, uh, cradle them and then we touch them from head to toe because I want that to become such an easy um, exercise for them. They're so relaxed, they're so into it, that when we are able to meet other people, this is a really great way that they're gonna start to be able to meet other people because they're gonna be so relaxed that you're gonna be able to go, look at this friendly new stranger, they're gonna do this with you, and they're gonna go, oh right, I know this exercise, it's a relaxing exercise, and I do it all the time every day, it's no big deal. It's a great exercise to do to hand feed half of their dinner with. But, um, and if you don't know what that is, send us an email and, um, and we'll have to do another class on just a virtual class or whatever. But basically it's touching from hand, head to toe. Um, and, but when you are handling and gently creating huggable puppies, food is mandatory. It's mandatory, okay? Because we are teaching them that they don't have to love it, they just have to tolerate it. And every single time you allow me to touch a little pinky of your toe or you allow me to put my finger in your mouth, you get a tiny piece of treat for that because you've just allowed me to do that, okay? All right, questions? Nobody? All right, thank you guys for being here. Thanks for doing this. Um, again, you are in a small percentage of people trying to work with their dogs, especially now, it's really hard to do, but good for you. I thank you, your dog thanks you. It's gonna make a big difference, it really is. Um, and so hopefully we will see you um, in more classes. We don't have as many scheduled for next week because we're just not exactly sure what's gonna happen. But if you would like to see something or you have an idea or something that you would like to work on, please do send us an email and we will create that class. Next week for sure, I'm doing an Easter arts and crafts project. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And we'll also be on, on Houston Life on Tuesday. Um, we're going to do a remote segment on Houston Life on Tuesday where we're going to talk about different enrichment activities that you can make out of household items. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Um, thank you. Have a good few days. Stay safe. Bye -bye. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.